I'm sure most of you are familiar with the concept of a function. Depending on the type of course where you were introduced to this idea, you might think of it in different ways. In a single variable calculus class, you probably got used to thinking of functions as graphs. On the x-axis you have the inputs and on the y-axis you have the outputs. Set theoretically, on the other hand, you can think of functions as rules assigning objects of a set, called the domain, to other objects of another set, called the codomain. This view is more general than the previous one. In fact, it includes it. We will refer to this view of functions as the extensional view, since the latter is concerned only with two sets, namely the domain and the codomain of a function. In such a view, we can see the action of a function as a black box, where the inputs are placed and they end up being modified, becoming the output. This view of functions is, however, quite new. In the past, in fact, functions were usually seen as rules that could transform inputs into outputs via a predefined process. Such a predefined process was often called expressio analytica by mathematicians of the time, and actually many big mathematical problems of the 17th and 18th century involved finding expressiones analytica for various functions and or extrapolations. A famous example of a problem of this typology is that found in Euler's 1729 letter to Goldbach, where he derived an expression for an extrapolation of the factorial, the now famous gamma function. The second view of functions is known as the intentional view, since it is focused on what is going on inside the black box we talked about earlier, that is, what rule or process the function uses to transform the elements of the domain into the elements of the codomain. These two views of functions give rise to different notions of function equality. Two functions are said to be extensionally equal if they have the same input-output behavior, whereas they are said to be intentionally equal if they are given by essentially the same formula, and we will define these terms more rigorously later. We can immediately understand that these two views of functions are both useful, but in different situations. The extensional view, with well-specified domain and codomain sets, is better suited for several areas of abstract mathematics, such as topology, algebra, or differential geometry. The intentional view, on the other hand, is better suited for computer science, and sometimes, in these situations, we could even neglect the type of inputs and outputs of the function, reducing the notion of function to just a process, with unspecified inputs and outputs. The study of functions from an intentional point of view, with little care to what kinds of objects the function takes as inputs, will be the starting point of what is known as type-free lambda calculus, or also known as untyped lambda calculus. The difference between untyped lambda calculus and typed lambda calculus is that in type lambda calculus, the intentional study of functions will be done with the additional notion of a type, which is usually an object of syntactic nature that is assigned to lambda terms. We will see that in type-free lambda calculus we can apply functions to themselves. This is impossible for a notion of function based on ZFC set theory. This is because of the axiom of foundation, but on the contrary, this will be one of the most powerful characteristics of lambda calculus. Don't worry if you still don't understand the lambda expressions displayed here. In fact, we will cover their meaning in due time. We will see in the future videos that employing our ability to apply functions to other functions and to themselves, we will be able to build a Turing complete formalism of computation using just functions. We will be able to define numbers as functions, thanks to an object called church numerals, as well as boolean values and or not logical operators and other objects. With this said, we are done with a general overview of the lambda calculus. In the next video, we will continue from here and we will start by explaining what the lambda terms we just displayed mean. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, I would be really thankful if you liked it and subscribed to help it get more visibility. With this said, I thank all of you for the attention.